The Lion and the Gypsy by Goffrey Patterson. Once there was a gypsy who lived in a land where the sun always shone. He traveled far and wide, but he never left the sound of the sea that he loved. Most of all, he liked to sit and watch the waves as they rose and fell. One day he said to himself, It's been years since I saw my mother and father, and he felt a great longing to be with them again. His old parents lived far away in a little village by the sea. The gypsy knew that if he walked far enough with the sea to his right hand and the mountains to his left hand, he would come to them. The very next day the gypsy set off. He wore his long robe of many colors that his mother had made for him, and over his head he wore a scarf the color of lemons, woven in silk, to shield him from the scorching sun. He took little else except for his lute <clears throat> that his father had given him when he was a boy. Day after day he walked. The white sand stretched out before him mile after mile. The mountains, the color of lavender and faded cornflowers, shimmered in the haze. The sea sparkled like sapphires and diamonds under the cloudless sky. Each night the gypsy walked until the sun set and the moon rose up into the night sky like a huge plate. Then he wrapped his robe around him to keep him warm and played his lute. This music reminded him of his parents and of his happy times with them as a boy. On the evening of the seventh day, the gypsy sat down to play as usual, but this time he was not alone. Behind him, in the shadow of the rocks, sat a huge lion with flowing golden mane. The lion listened to the beautiful music late into the night until the gypsy stopped playing and fell asleep. Only then did the lion come out of the hiding place. He walked up to the sleeping gypsy and gazed at him, wondering who he was and where he was going. Then the lion went away, swishing his long tail in the sand to wipe out his paw prints, so the gypsy never knew that he had been there. For three days and three nights, the lion followed the gypsy. Each night, a new friend joined him to listen to the beautiful music. First the gray ibis bird, then the black scorpion, and last the green snake. They all listened in the shadow, and the gypsy never knew that they were there. When he fell asleep, they came down to the seashore to watch over him and make sure he was safe for the night, but he never knew that they were there. On the fourth morning, something terrible happened. The gypsy did not wake up. The dawn came and the sun rose into the sky, but the gypsy lay by the sea with the sun beating down. The lion and the other creatures crept up to him, but his eyes were closed even when the lion gently touched him with his great paw. What is wrong? hissed the snake slithering in the gypsy's feet. Why doesn't he wake up? cracked the scorpion. Perhaps the heat is too much for him, said the ibis. The lion drew close and looked in the gypsy's still face for a long time. Something is wrong, he growled softly, but I do not know what it is. Then the ibis saw a fish lying by his, the gypsy's hand. I know that fish. It's a poisonous blowfish. The gypsy has eaten it, and it will make him very ill. They all looked at the ibis and then the gypsy. If we leave him here, he will die. Perhaps the lion could carry him, suggested the snake. No, no, he is too big, growled the lion. Now, why don't we just take the loot instead? said the little black scorpion. Someone is bound to recognize it. But when the ibis tried to fly with the loot, it was too heavy. You will have to carry it, said the ibis. Only you are strong enough. I will try, said the lion. But how will it stay on my back? I will wrap myself around the loot and around you and hold tight, said the snake. Very well, growled the lion, but if you squeeze me too hard, snake, I'll bite your head off, so be careful. The black scorpion climbed onto the loot, and the three creatures set off down the shore, leaving the gray ibis with his wings outstretched over the gypsy. The lion was indeed strong and very fast. His long flowing mane swept back over his shoulders in the warm air as he raced along the sand. The scorpion disappeared inside the loot to shelter him. From the sun and the snake held tight but not too tight and the lion ran faster and faster mile after mile of white sand passed 
under his huge paws as he ran, with the sea to his right and the mountains to his left. Far behind, the gypsy lay on the seashore with the ibis watching over him. There was no sound except for the crashing waves and the white sand. As the sun began to sink into the sky, the lion grew tired and ran more slowly. In the distance, he could see a small village, and by the time he reached the edge of the village, he could go no farther. The lion and the snake, both exhausted, fell asleep. But the little black scorpion crawled out of the loot and started to pluck the strings with his pincers. The music drifted on the quiet evening air. At the first house in the village, an old man and his wife heard it and stopped to listen. That sounds like our son's loop, said the man in astonishment. They followed the music and they soon found the sleeping lion and the snake and the little black scorpion playing the loop. What does this mean? whispered the man. These beautiful animals have come to tell us that our son is in trouble, she said his wife. And so they set out following the lion's paw marks with the sea to their left and the mountains to their right until they found their son with the ibis still watching over him. They made a stretcher out of driftwood from the sea and with the lion's help they brought the gypsy back home to get well. Each day the gypsy got better and each day he would sit up on his bed under the palm tree beside the sea and play his lute. The lion, the snake, and the ibis came to listen and so did the little black scorpion. Only this time the gypsy knew that they were there and was glad to share his music and his happiness. The end. It is inspired by Henri Rousseau's painting, The Sleeping Gypsy.